A man coughed on the police and said, I hope you catch corona. And a man spit in a child's face and told him, you now have corona. And a man fired warning shots inside a hotel lobby after the guests weren't social distancing. And another man bought a Porsche with a check printed from his home computer. All these stories have one thing in common. They all involve a Florida man. Because it's Friday, and this is Weird AF News, where on Friday we do Florida Friday. All the weird news from the week, all from Florida. This is your host, Jonesy. And it's my favorite day. Those bizarre stories you hear about all the time that seem to only happen here in Florida. I know, right? Can't make this stuff up. It is just one of the many wacky news stories out of Florida. And why does the Sunshine State consistently produce such strange news? But what accounts for all this bizarre news? Is it the weather? Is it the people? Florida is full of the crazy stories. A Florida man coughed at the police saying, I hope you catch the corona. A suspect in Florida faces charges of battering his mother. He coughed and blew at deputies as well while he was being arrested, telling them that he hoped they caught the coronavirus, according to authorities. Deputies were called to a home Brent Smith shares with his mother. After she said Brent shoved her several times, he grabbed a butter knife and threatened to kill her. Ah, oh, this is no quality son. Brent Smith with the butter knife. The butter knife wielding Brent Smith threatening his mommy. Uh, the sheriff's office took him into custody. He's 46 years old. He wasn't done with his threats, though. Apparently, he threatened them. He threatened the officers from the back of the patrol car. Coughing, blowing at them, saying... I hope you die. I hope you catch the corona. I hope the coronavirus, I hope it latches on to you. I hope it latches on to your soul and you catch it. You even, you have it even when you get up into heaven. Although you probably won't go to heaven because you're a pig. You pigs, I hope you catch the coronavirus, you pigs. That was not quite uh, the entire quote. There's more, but um, I just don't have time to cover it all. <laughs> Smith faces charges. Wow, there's a whole list of charges that Smith faces. None of them mention the butter knife. I'm surprised. Um, it does refer to the butter knife, though, as a deadly weapon. <laughs> I have a feeling that there's another weapon involved. Is a butter knife really a deadly weapon? I feel like it's it's more of like a, a, a just a threatening weapon. It's not really deadly. It says, assault with a deadly weapon, aggravated battery on a person 65 or older. How dare you? Uh, although 65 or older is actually most of Florida. He's also being charged with tampering with a witness, robbery by sudden snatching. <laughs> That's a new one. Robbery by sudden snatching. Huh. Unbelievable. Grand theft, assault on a law enforcement officer. Ooh, coughing and blowing at a police officer right now during the virus is considered assault, I'd imagine. Corruption by threat against a public official in violation of probation on an original charge of aggravated battery on a pregnant person. How is this guy out in the world in Florida? Um, he's already aggravated battery on a pregnant person, and he's still out there in the world coughing on various individuals. It's not acceptable, man. The article ends by saying, according to court records, uh, there's no attorney listed for Smith. Oh, believe me, there will be one because, well, some people out there are just demons. <laughs> A Florida man has been arrested for spitting on a child and saying, You now have coronavirus! <laughs> you see the theme here? A lot of spitting going on in Florida. Yes, a Florida man has been accused of spitting in a little boy's face and telling him that you now have the coronavirus. The incident apparently happened at a restaurant in Treasure Island, Florida. Is this the name of the city? Treasure Island? Oh, that's... I bet you there's nothing wonderful about Treasure Island in Florida. And everybody going there is being completely fooled. Like, hey, Treasure Island should be a nice vacation spot. Are you spitting on me, sir? My goodness. What's the age of this spitter? 47, Jason Andrew Copenhaver. Hey, you're 47 years old, adult spitting on a boy. This guy's accused of going up to a boy whose name and age were not released, getting angry with the boy for... Uh, for not wearing a face mask, apparently. Is it for wearing? Yeah, the little boy does not have a face mask. I'm just making sure. I know people in Florida are a lot of times anti-face masks, so I wasn't sure, I wasn't sure where this was, was landing. Uh, 
the Treasure Island police. <laughs> really? You're a Treasure Island police officer? How's anybody going to take you seriously? What's your job? I'm a police officer at Treasure Island. Like, what, you work at Disney? No, no, there's a city, Treasure Island. I swear to God. What do you give DUIs to pirates all day? So these Treasure Island cops say the boy refused to remove his mask and that this guy Copenhaver then grabbed the boy's hand very tightly, got close to his face and told him he now had the coronavirus. The officers said the boy told them Copenhaver was in such close proximity that spit particles from Copenhaver's mouth landed directly on his face. Oh, did he have the mask off for that? The records show that the restaurant employees suspected this man of being intoxicated. He was not wearing any shoes. <laughs> well, he shouldn't be in the restaurant without shoes, although this is Treasure Island. You know, I just imagine just you know, people with parrots on their shoulder or walking into Starbucks. It's okay. It's okay. It's Treasure Island. Do what you will. Oh, you on my property? What are you doing? I'm digging for treasure. Uh, they also say that this guy tried to hit a staff member after being asked to sit down, please. He was later taken outside and pinned to the ground until the police arrived. <laughs> they tied him to the mast. When asked if he had the coronavirus, this fellow said that uh, he didn't know. He had never been tested for it. He was then booked right into the jail and then was freed right away because someone posted bail. Oh, unbelievable. This guy's on. This guy's out there spitting on more children. <laughs> It's Florida Friday, only on Weird AF News. A Florida man fired warning shots in a hotel lobby, telling the guests, You all aren't social distancing! A 29-year-old man was arrested in Miami Beach, Florida, after firing four warning shots from his gun and telling a mother and her son that they weren't social distancing. This occurred in a Miami hotel lobby. Fortunately, the shots didn't result in any injuries. A woman and her family were guests at the Crystal Beach Suites Hotel. They checked in earlier in the day, according to the Miami Beach Police Department. Uh, later, when the woman and her son went to the lobby to wait for her boyfriend, they encountered Douglas Marks, who they did not know. Oh boy, you know this is going to take a turn. You all need to leave, Marx told the woman and her son. He also said, you all aren't social distancing, according to a statement that she gave to the police. She said she ignored him and took her son to sit on the couch in the lobby, but then overheard the man saying, let me take care of them. I got two people not following directions here. She said she heard Marx repeat, you all need to leave, and then heard gunshots and ran out of the hotel with her son. Her son supported his mother's statements and said that he saw this man holding a large gun. <laughs> what the hell? Several other witnesses in the hotel confirmed, confirmed that they saw this guy with a gun and heard multiple shots. <laughs> According to the report, Marx confessed his involvement. After Yes, I was involved. <laughs> That's all I'll say. <laughs> his involvement. No, I was only involved. I won't say how I was involved, okay? Look, it, I'm just trying to keep people safe these days. Turns out, turns out this guy's got a different story. He told the police that he thought he was being followed. He told the front desk clerk to call 911 for him, and then he fired four warning shots. Oh, okay, like you're fi followed by who? Ghosts? And it's okay? This is your story? No, no, what happened was I fired my shots because I thought some invisible beings were following me. I'm afraid of ghosts. Apparently, this hotel's been haunted. I saw the YouTube video. I mean, at that point, he ought to just admit that he's trying to save lives here. No, no, I want people to social distance. They're not social distancing. I'm trying to make a point. <laughs> that's, a, that's a better story than I thought I was being followed, so I shot, fu uh, fired shots into the air. You know, this is a tricky one because I don't know what you do with this guy. He seems to be the only Florida man that is trying to curb the virus at this point. Of course, his tactics are unacceptable, but his heart is in the right place. <laughs> you like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. Too difficult. No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. 
A Florida man bought a Porsche with a check printed from his home computer. Yes, a Florida man is facing charges after using a fake check to buy a $140,000 Porsche. In addition, he also attempted to buy some luxury watches, authorities say. Who's this genius? 42-year-old Casey William Kelly. He's charged with grand theft of a motor vehicle and uttering a false banknote. Uttering a false banknote? Don't you mean passing a false banknote? I'd imagine. Uttering means like he spoke about a false banknote, right? I don't know. What do I know about crime? Just two days earlier, the authorities say Kelly drove drove off with a Porsche from a dealership, a 911 Turbo to be exact. He allegedly handed over a cashier's check that he printed from his home computer to buy this car. <laughs> the car was later reported stolen. Hey, how long did you wait before you verified that the check was good, you dumb dealership? <laughs> hey, uh, let's take the check. Yeah, yeah, drive away, drive away. Now, now shall we verify if the check's good? Yes, yeah, certainly. Let's do it now after he drove away. Oh, man, it's no good. Okay, reported stolen. Shortly after purchasing this German luxury car, authorities say Mr. Kelly then attempted to buy three Rolex watches. Of course, he's like, you know, this check game seems to be working out. <laughs> Nobody's verifying my check. Kelly handed over the fraudulent check for $61,521 to a jeweler. However, the jeweler kept the watches until they could determine if the check would clear. Wow, that jeweler actually operated the business correctly, unlike that Porsche dealership. <laughs> hey, yeah, drive off with it. Yeah, take it, take it. Well, let's look at we're really struggling right now during the pandemic to sell cars. We'll take your check right now. We don't even care. What is it? It's purple and looks like it's written on in crayon. Yeah, just leave. Just leave. Take the, take the Porsche. We'll verify later. No problem. I'm sure it's good. After the arrest, Kelly allegedly told the authorities that the checks had come from his home computer and not a bank. <laughs> what, a, what a guy, man, I tell you. He's like, I'm not waiting for that 600 a week unemployment to come through. <laughs> I'm just going to print some checks off my computer. And you know what? I'll probably get away with it for a little while because this is Florida. If you like podcasts, check out Spotify. You can listen to all your favorite artists and podcasts in one place for free. You don't even need a premium account. Spotify has a huge selection of podcasts on every topic, including this one that you're listening to right now. And you can easily share what you're listening to with friends on Instagram as well. So download the Spotify app, search for your favorite podcast, and also make sure to follow Weird AF News and never miss an episode. Yes, download Spotify. And make your life easier. Could it be I got a disease in Florida? What's up, y'all? Hope you enjoyed the Florida Friday episode. This is Jonesy. And I would like to thank everyone who sent me Florida Friday stories this week. They were wonderful. Uh, I want to give a shout out to someone who reached out to me on Instagram named Pablo from Costa Rica. Unbelievable individual here. Hello, Jonesy. You are hilarious. Every morning, Weird AF News plays during my news briefing on my Alexa. You are part of my daily routine. Thanks, man. Keep up the great work, Jonesy. Stay safe. Cheers from Costa Rica. Isn't that amazing? South American fans. I don't have very many, so I'm very grateful. Thank you, Pablo. Thanks for listening. I had no clue I got fans in, in South America. Um, you know, my... my I, you, know, and you know what I was thinking, too? I'm like, I should hire somebody to do Weird AF News in Spanish. I mean... But I don't think it would be the same, man, because it wouldn't be me. If there was a way to translate my voice, every episode translated to my voice, still me, but it's in Spanish, using some technology, that would be fabulous. Please tell me about that. If anybody knows of such a technology, I would totally do that um, for every damn episode going forward. Yeah, 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 because I think there's a whole swath of people that could enjoy this podcast if I just put it in different languages. That'd be amazing. Um, we got some people that gave me some nice reviews, by the way, on Amazon. The first one is Jeffrey Talbot, uh, who I want to give a big shout out to. He gave me five stars and wrote, this is really good stuff. Florida Fridays are fantastic. Jonesy is relatable and easy to listen to. All from a closet. Been listening for quite a while now, and I think it's time to, to give him five stars. Yes, five stars, Jeffrey Talbot. Um, thank you so much, buddy. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to give me a review on Amazon. It's a place I need reviews. So, um, and I want to say the same thing to Josh, Josh Giles, who wrote, uh, weird AF news is my daily news treat. Gave me five stars. 
He wrote, Jonesy takes the everyday news and finds the best and most interesting stories to make all our days a bit more entertaining. Thank you, sir. Keep it up. Thank you, Josh Giles. You keep it up. Hope you have a great weekend. Both Josh and, Josh and Jeffrey, big time shout out. I'm so grateful. Um, for the, re- the reviews are so helpful, so cool. And uh, I just love it. I love it. And I, I hope you enjoyed the shout outs there. Please check out my Patreon, will you? Patreon.com slash Weird AF News. Where you can support Weird AF News. Uh, yes, very easily. I'm sounding like David Attenborough. Attenborough. Yes. You can support Weird AF News by giving Jonesy a couple of dollars a month. Just enough for a cup of coffee. <laughs> or, a, or a cheap light beer, perhaps. Yes, check out the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Weird AF News. I'm David Attleboro, and I support Weird AF News. <laughs> that, that was pretty bad, actually, but I did the best I could. Um, I came across a weird story about David At Attenborough. In fact, maybe I'll cover it next week. It'll give me the opportunity to improve upon my impression of him. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What else did I want to say? Oh, follow me on Instagram over the weekend if you're not doing nothing and you want to reach out, say what's up. Or in, uh, looking at my, you know, I'm putting funny videos and photos up there as well. It's at Funny Jones. Also, my email is funnyjones at gmail.com. And the phone number here, if you'd like to call the show, is 646-450-2012. We had some regulars call the show. I'm going to publish those calls right now. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Hope you have a great weekend, and we'll see you on Monday. Hey, Jonesy, I'm here to tell you that there's a violation in this year's uh, thumb wrestling uh, uh, out here, out of uh, Western Florida, East Central, East Central Florida. Um, uh, this is uh, the, the bread brain. The bread brain. Oh, good God, man! The bread brain. I've been drinking, man. I've been drinking Sprite and Nips all afternoon. But I gotta tell you, Jonesy, um, if you were to have a penis growing off your forearm, would that be a violation in the in the, in the Central Florida uh, handbook as to thumb wrestling? Jonesy, as an essential employee. Out here on the roads, slinging that bread, the bread brain that I am, I will promise you, I have never, and will never, ever shat in someone's garden. Now, if they got a compost pile, that's another story. By the way, Jones, I'll talk to you later. Please don't you poo no more in my backyard garden. Amazon, please don't you poo no more in my backyard. Amazon. Hey Jonesy, it's Gus from Western New York. Um, about the the pooper, the Amazon pooper. I did what I think that's messed up. They said they weren't gonna tell Amazon, and then they did. And like you said, it was not malicious, but. I wanted to throw this in. Did you know that in some states, I can't remember which states, but um, it is actually illegal to refuse the bathroom to somebody if they have a condition like Crohn's or colitis? Yeah, that's an interesting tidbit, huh? So if it's a public place, even in the COVID age, they have to let them use the bathroom if they say they have Crohn's or colitis. So if you ever need to rush and use the bathroom, there you go. All right, peace. Oh yes, I'm sure in Florida, plutonium is available in every in every Walmart and corner drugstore. But in the rest of the country, it's a little harder to come by. Hey Jonesy, it's Michael from Iowa City. I wanted to tell you that I enjoyed your stories yesterday. I wanted to comment on the Brazilian doctor who became the mayor of a city down there in Brazil. And you were right on to put a disclaimer on his medical advice and to tell people to seek the advice of their own uh, primary care physician in treating COVID-19 because the doctor's advice was not very sound as far as, you know, being based in real true medical fact. His suggestion to use azithromycin, which we would know generically uh, as a uh, is zithromycin, but which we would know as a ZPAC. Well, that is an antibiotic, which would be worthless against COVID-19, which is a virus. His other suggestion was for camphor, 
We have that in such things as Vicks Vapor Rub and Carmex for, you know, uh, chapped lips. And it's used also to treat warts and for localized pain on skin. And so the only thinking on that is, you know, if you're going to inhale camphor with the strong smell, you know, he's, maybe his thinking is that it would open up the airways because COVID-19 is thought of as a, a lung or, you know, inhalation type problem. And if you're thinking that would open up airways, well, that's the only reason I can think of that he might suggest that. Um, it also can be used as an antitussive, which would help people stop coughing. As far as the rectal ozone, well, ozone that's inhaled, that's a pollutant from such things as car exhaust, but if you use it rectally to increase oxygen in the bloodstream, well, there are only clinical trials currently going on to increase oxygen levels in the blood as a possible treatment, and so that's not even approved. So you're right. It's not good sound advice, and uh, don't follow it is basically what it comes down to, and that's from my 30 years of medical experience in both pharmacy and a pathology laboratory here at a large uh, Midwest um, tertiary care university hospital. So that's very good advice for you to uh, put a disclaimer on his advice. And as far as the uh, white trash bash in Peoria, Illinois, that's a city of about 110,000, very Midwestern. So it was curious that you put the old uh, hillbilly southern twang to your voice when you read the story uh, because it's the Midwest and we're usually thought of as having zero accent. But anyhow, it was funny to hear you do it, and especially the French accent on the police officer from uh, the – the, the, the river there with the Fond du Lac. Fond du Lac meaning the uh, bottom of the lake. But it